Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, so today I have a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm actually doing um, a collaboration with Heather Mater and we are using the same colors. She used golden acrylics. I am using uh, Liquitex Basics in Thalo Blue. This is an opaque and the Artist Love Copper, uh, also an opaque. I have Artist Loft White Flow Acrylic. I have all opaques today. And, uh, and I also have a white. It is the Flow Acrylic, and then I have um, mixed with it a tiny bit of the Satin Enamels. Uh, really a tiny bit, maybe 20%. I want to see if it will react with that small of an amount and if it will be less likely to crack. Another thing that I'm doing differently than I usually do, I have uh, adjusted my amount. So this is a 16 by 20. This would normally need 11 and a half, 12 ounces of paint. I'm going to put down a base coat so I don't need that much to cover because the base coat will help it stretch and spread. So I've cut the amount that's going to go into my cup by about 30%. So I'm going to put about seven ounces, or I think it was seven and a half ounces in, uh, in this cup. All right, so I'm gonna lay down a base coat. These paints are mixed. One part paint to two parts Floetrol. And, well, the Flow Acrylic is, is one to one. One part paint to one part Floetrol. And I have added a little bit of the Liquitex pouring medium to each. I am now officially out of all of my pouring mediums except Floetrol, and I'm almost out of that. Heavens to Murgatroy, whatever will I do? Uh, so uh, those are mixed to those proportions and they are thinned with 90% water, 10% Floetrol mixture. Okay, because this has the Liquitex in it, it is going to set up quicker than if it were just Floetrol. So I don't want to mess around. I don't want my base coat to thicken up on me. The consistency of these paints, what you're looking for is when you drizzle your paint off the stick and it lands in the paint, it does not form a mound, it just disappears. If it sinks, you've gone too thin. And if it forms a mound, it is too thick. And your paints will thicken up as they sit, so. All right, I'm just gonna add a touch of this uh, Flow White in the bottom of this cup. Wasn't much, just a, just enough to cover the bottom. And then I'm going to add some of the white that has the enamel. I'm going to layer this more than I usually would. And then I'm gonna do the copper. If I were doing a regular straight pour, I would have an opaque and then a semi-transparent and a transparent, and I would have them in the cup in that order. But because these are all opaque, I am going to play around a bit.
And then I have the white and I'm gonna pour this up from a little bit higher so that it kind of sinks. I don't know if you can see that, but it just sank. And that will hopefully die, like kind of disperse itself as I'm pouring. All right, so I have about six ounces of paint in that cup. I think that might still be enough. I can have negative space, that's fine. But what I wanted to avoid was too much paint because it's cracked and I wanna avoid that. Okay, you can see the last white that I poured in. It sank and it's starting to pop up already. So let's pour this and I'm going to do a straight pour, not a ring pour. Head on the dismount. All right. Ideally, you want to get that cup up before it drips. Pouring in this fashion creates a lot of bubbles. So let's pop those. So you can see I've got some copper cells popping up. I've got some white cells. Hopefully this will look interesting once this is stretched out. All right. Tilting slowly. Always bring the weight of your paint back to center. before changing directions. Always, always. That's how you avoid those squiggly lines and losing your cells and... You'll see I'm coming back to center and now I'll go in this direction. Back to center, I'll do the opposite way. The thing about a straight pour, the more you stretch it, the more cells you will get as it thins out the paint that is on the top layer. It makes it easier for the paints that are underneath to pop through. Okay, and now I'll head towards the corner. And you'll see if you control your paint, you can actually almost make corners. If you are very conscious about the weight of your paint.
There is some of the white cell action going on. Um, there's definitely less uh, than in the previous paintings, but I used less of the um, less of the enamel paint. So let's scrape this so that it does not drip. If we do not want it to, we want to keep our composition. This paint that is dripping, we'll just keep pulling paint from the top. Comes down from the sides, pulls it from the top. It's got to come from somewhere. All right, I'm calling this done. Bring in for a close up. Okay, here it is. I think uh, it came out very pretty. Not as much of the uh, big white fluffy cell action, but the ones that came up are very pretty. And the ones that are coming up in that blue just makes that blue look so much like water like bubbles in the water and there's some of that delicate copper lacing mixed in which is really hard to see get a little of the lacing up there it kind of looks like coral Some small cells popping up there from when I just torched it. And I'm wondering if that's what causes the cracks because if you can see right there, it looks like it's starting. So maybe torching this paint is a no-no. At least post stretching. All right, there it is. I hope you learned something. I sure did. Please like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my Amazon store. Most of the things that you see me use can be purchased through that link. Anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, even if it's not in my store, if you enter through that link, I make a small commission at no additional cost to you. A very easy way to give back. And if you find my videos helpful and uh, you want to help me stay stocked up in supplies, like all the pouring mediums I'm about to buy, <laughs> uh, please have a visit to the PayPal tip jar. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, and go make some art. Join our Facebook group. Post your masterpieces, ask any questions you may have, get some inspiration, and I feel like I'm forgetting something. Probably am. Um, my website, did I say that yet? I don't think I did. Check out my website, GinaDeLuca.net. I have paintings and music for sale. All right, you guys, that's it for me. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.